Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the world's weirdest guitars. Today, we're getting into some microtonal madness with a guitar that would otherwise be completely normal if it didn't have 11 additional frets slapped onto the neck. I've never seen anything like this before. This should be a good. Before we get into it, a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, my course platform, Samurai Guitar Theory. Over there, I've made two courses, The Rudiments and Beyond the Basics, where I walk you through the building blocks of music theory from the ground up to more advanced topics. These two courses are professionally animated, making the tough stuff easy to understand. There are interactive elements like detailed documentation, quizzes, lists of things to work on, and more. I'm doing a flash sale over there where the first 100 of you to use promo code microtonal will save $50 off the two course bundle, getting you both courses for the normal price of one. You can find that over at www.samuraiguitartheory.com. I'll also put up a link in the description. Anyways, on to the madness. Today's guitar is the High Flyer Phase 4 MT by Eastwood Guitars. This is a standard guitar with a standard sized neck. However, there is one unique feature that takes it into the world of what the heck. There are more frets, a lot more frets. This allows you to play notes that would be inaccessible on a normal guitar. For example, here's an A, here's an A flat, and here's a note that's halfway between an A and an A flat. What can you do with this newfound freedom? Here's a little demo. Now, let me tell you about my relationship with microtonal music. Prior to getting this guitar, there was none. I figured I could go on the Wikipedia page, get a feel for all things microtonal, sum it up in this video, and move on with my life. I was wrong. The wormhole that is microtonality goes far deeper than I could have imagined. This video should not be seen as a comprehensive source on the subject, but rather one man's experience as he peers into the quarter tone looking glass. First of all, what even is microtonality? To understand that, we need to talk about the tuning system that Western music uses, 12 tone equal temperament or 12 tet. When I hit the low E string on my Telecaster, it vibrates at a frequency that we've labeled an E note. If I play the 12th fret on my low E string, my string vibrates at twice the rate. This note is also called an E, and the musical space between these two E's is called an octave. 12 tone equal temperament breaks this octave down into 12 equal spaces or 12 tones. The system is reflected by the guitar as it has 12 notes separated by 12 frets on every string before the octave repeats. The space from one of these notes to the next is called a semitone. Going up two notes gives us a whole tone. It's this system of spacings or intervals that makes up the framework for the bulk of music we come across. Which brings me to microtonality, music that is created using spaces smaller than the semitone. When we look at this guitar, we can see that in the space that there would normally be 12 frets, there are actually 18, giving us six additional notes we can play. This naturally raises the question, why? Well, like I mentioned before, the music that's been classified as Western music uses the 12 tone equal temperament tuning system. But there are other musics from around the globe that use completely different systems. You can find music from Africa, India, Thailand, Burma, as well as many other places that use notes outside of the tuning system that we've become accustomed to. With a standard guitar, you could only play these notes with a slide or by bending to them, which offers a decreased accessibility. Something like this would be near impossible to play. The next question that comes up is why don't all guitars have these extra frets? Well, since the bulk of the music that we're exposed to doesn't use these notes, they can often sound quite out of tune or just straight up wrong. For example, here is the worst sounding chord that I've ever played. Now just because 12 tet is the standard doesn't mean that there aren't bands who have tapped into something outside of the norm. One of those bands is called King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard, who I am ashamed to admit I just found out about a few weeks ago. They're a rock group who've used customized instruments allowing them to access twice as many notes in a 24 tet system. The guitarist and bassist use instruments with added frets, the keyboardist uses a modified synth, and the drummer, he just plays the drums. This guitar was directly inspired by the band as it's essentially a recreation of the Univox High Flyer that their guitarist, Cook Craig, uses. If you've never heard those guys, definitely check them out. I can't recommend them enough. 
My relationship with this guitar has been much different than any other guitar I've owned. When I got it, I plugged it in, played for a bit, and said to myself, I have no idea how I'm going to make anything half decent on this thing. This video is going to be a disaster. But I stuck with it and started to figure out how someone like myself, who has spent a lifetime deep in the 12 tet system, might begin dabbling with microtonality. When I'm playing this thing, I don't like to draw too much attention to those microtonal notes or it sounds quite wrong to my ear. Instead, I think of them as passing tones and chords or lines like this. It's important to note that even though we use a 12 tet system, that doesn't mean that we never come across these microtonal notes. The blues is filled with quarter tone bends that sound amazing, and whenever a guitarist uses vibrato, they're bending their string in and around these microtones. When I realized this, I tried playing some cliched blues dad guitar story licks, and that really opened a lot of what I personally can do with this. <laughs> And that brings me to the part in the video where I give you the official Sammy G review on this guitar. Part of me wishes that they just straight up split every fret into two, but my understanding is that Stu McKenzie of King Gizzard based his original microtonal guitar off of a Turkish bag Lama, which uses a similar layout. The other guitarists in the band use the same system, and then Eastwood used that for what I'm pretty sure is the first mass-produced microtonal guitar. I have mixed feelings on this. There are times when I'm playing this guitar and I want to grab a note that's not there, like the quarter tone that would be here. However, since not every fret is split, I can still conceptualize this like a normal guitar. I have seen pictures of guitars that have 24 frets in the octave, and it's totally overwhelming. The guitar sells for $1,200 US dollars, which is a lot for a guitar made overseas. The quality is acceptable, but that wouldn't be the selling point at this price range. My biggest complaint is that Eastwood doesn't also make a microtonal bass, because if everyone in your band isn't using this system, you're limited in the ways that you can incorporate this guitar. To summarize, like every guitar I've ever featured in this series, it's certainly not for everyone, but after I got over my initial learning curve, I found myself thinking in ways that I've never thought before, which is one of my favorite musical experiences. Of all my weird guitars, this one challenged me the most, but it was a challenge that I ended up thoroughly enjoying, and I can see myself continuing to dabble with this in the future. To wrap it up, here's a jam that I think encapsulates what I can do best on this guitar. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the Eastwood High Flyer Phase 4 MT, an adventure into microtonality. I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video. Over the last couple months, a lot of the revenue sources on YouTube got pandemic pretty hard, so make sure you check them out over at www.samuraiguitartheory.com, and by them, I mean me. I made these courses on music theory thinking about how a guitar player could learn this stuff from the ground up. I wanted to make the resource I wish I had when I was learning diatonic harmony, triads, the way that scales work, modes, extended chords, and stuff like that. Make sure that you're one of the first hundred to use promo code MICROTONAL so you can get both courses bundled together for the normal price of one. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and leave me a comment. If you want to get caught up in the series where I check out the world's weirdest guitars, hit that link up there. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Until next time, I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.